Hi again. Um, this is uh, part four of uh, Stephen J. Gould Speaks for Himself. And uh, this shouldn't last too much longer here. I divided up the last uh, ten minutes into two segments so that I could add a couple of comments at the end. Uh, getting back to the text. We propose the theory of punctuated equilibrium largely to provide a different explanation for pervasive trends in the fossil record. Trends, we argued, cannot be attributed to gradual transformation within lineages, but must arise from the different success of certain kinds of species. A trend, we argued, is more like climbing a flight of stairs, punctuated and stasis, rather than rolling up an inclined plane. Since we propose punctuated equilibria to explain trends, it is infuriating to be quoted again and again by creationists, whether through design or stupidity, I don't know, uh, as admitting that the fossil record includes no transitional forms. Transitional forms are generally lacking at the species level, but they are abundant between larger groups. Yet a pamphlet entitled, quote, Harvard scientists agree evolution is a hoax, end quote, states, quote, the facts of punctuated equilibrium, which Gould and Eldridge are forcing Darwinists to swallow, fit the picture that Brian insisted on and which God has revealed to us in the Bible, end quote. Continuing the distortion, several creationists have equated the theory of punctuated equilibrium with a caricature of the beliefs of Richard Goldschmidt, a great early geneticist. Goldschmidt argued in a famous book published in 1940 that new groups can, rise all, can arise all at, at once through major mutations. He referred to these suddenly transformed creatures as hopeful monsters. I am attracted to some aspects of the non-caricatured version, but Goldsmith's theory still has nothing to do with punctuated equilibrium. Creationists, uh, creationist Luther Sunderland talks of the punctuated equilibrium hopeful monster theory and tells his hopeful readers that, quote, it amounts to tacit admission that anti-evolutionists are correct in asserting there is no fossil evidence supporting the theory that all life is connected to a common ancestor, end quote. Duane Gish writes, according to Goldschmidt, and now apparently according to Gould, a reptile laid an egg from which the first bird, feathers and all, was produced, end quote. Any evolutionist who believes such nonsense would be rightly laughed off the intellectual stage, yet the only theory that could ever envision such a scenario for the origin of birds is creationism, with God acting in the egg. I am both angry and amused by uh, the creationists, but mostly I am deeply sad. Sad for many reasons. Sad because so many people who respond to creationist appeals are troubled for the right reason, but venting their anger at the wrong target. It is true that scientists have often been dogmatic and elitist. It is true that we have often allowed the white-coated advertising image to represent us. Scientists say that Brandex cures bunions ten times faster than... Mm, we have not fought it adequately because we derive benefits from appearing as a new priesthood. It is also true that faceless and bureaucratic state power intrudes more and more into our lives and removes choices that should belong to individuals and communities. I can understand that school curricula, imposed from above and without local input, might be seen as one more insult on all these grounds. But the culprit is not, and cannot be, evolution or any other fact of the natural world. Identify and fight our legitimate enemies by all means, but we are not among them. I am sad because the practical result of this brouhaha will not be expanded coverage to include creationism, that would also make me sad, but the reduction or excision of evolution from high school curricula. Evolution is one of the half dozen great ideas developed by science. It speaks to the profound issues of genealogy that fascinate all of us, the roots phenomenon writ large. Where did we come from? Where did life arise? How did it develop? How are organisms related? It forces us to think, 
ponder and wonder. Shall we deprive millions of this knowledge and once again teach biology as a set of, uh, of dull and unconnected facts without the thread that weaves diverse material into a supple unity? But most of all, I am saddened by a trend I am just beginning to discern among my colleagues. I sense that some now wish to mute the healthy debate about theory that has brought new life to evolution, ev evolutionary biology. It provides grist for creationist mills, they say, even if only by distortion. Perhaps we should lie low and rally around the flag of strict Darwinism, at least for the moment, a kind of old-time religion on our part. But we should borrow, borrow another metaphor and recognize that we, too, have to tread a straight and narrow path, surrounded by roads to perdition. For if we ever begin to suppress our research and to, uh, to, to understand nature, to quench our own intellectual excitement in a misguided effort to present a united front where it does not and should not exist, then we are truly lost. Now this is Stephen J. Gould. Um, this is uh, what I've just read is Stephen J. Gould, uh, an essay called Evolution as Fact and Theory, May 1981, from a book, Hands, Teeth, and Horses, Toes, New York, W. W. Norton and Company, 1994, pages 253 through 262. Okay, I had just a few more comments here. Um, I will put a, um, a, um, a reference up here and, um, this way. I do this all the time. Uh, in, the, in the description box, there will be a, uh, a link to the article that this is from, so you can read it for yourself. Um, these are the words of uh, Stephen J. Gould. Um, again, this was an answer to a, um, a quote that was posted by His Truth Be Known, and earlier, in the, in the earlier part of uh, uh, part one or part two or even part three, I had said that I was giving his truth be known the benefit of the doubt as to whether, there whether he was entirely honest in putting this quote up, um, that he actually believed that this is what Gould thought. Um, but um, after reading uh, a lot more in this thread uh, today and go going back over it, I'm beginning to see. Now, um, he mined this quote deliberately from a creationist site and um, has put it up um, really as a straw man. And uh, I think he knows very well that Gould never repudiated anything of his theory. Um, the the uh, quote in here about it being a trade secret of paleontology is um, is some offhanded flippant remark, but really does not represent Gould's thinking. And to say that it does um, is dishonest if you know better. And um, his truth be known, I think you do know better. Anyway, that's it for this series. I um, I hope uh, that uh, you've enjoyed it. Um, Maybe it was too long and too ponderous. Um, it remains to be seen. I'll be looking for your comments, of course. And uh, I imagine uh, his truth be known will certainly weigh in on this.